Hey, hey everyone, Matt Cribbs here, and welcome to another Wednesday morning, and I'm driving. So that would be my Wednesday morning drive. How's it going? I'm doing really well. A little, little bit tired. It's been a busy, busy couple days, weekend and all that, but uh, you know, hey, trying, getting, getting by, but I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. I'm trying to make this turn here, and that bus was doing a strange thing by stopping when he was in the straight lane, so. I don't know what was up with that. Anyway, hope you're doing well. Um, I, like I said, it's, it was a busy, busy weekend. Had family in town. Had a great time with them. Had went to the uh, the New York Auto Show. I did not take a camera to record. Um, just with with you know, wifey McRibs and version one, version two, and version two point one, and all the little all the little ones and it was just it was just too much um but i did say take some pictures and um you know what i'll break my no editing rule and put a couple pictures up right here so here Okay, that was there was it was pretty cool. There was there was a crazy concept car you saw there, concept truck, concept house, whatever it was with it with stairs coming out of it. Um, there was an indie car which was always good to see um, at the Honda Honda booth and uh, and all sorts of other nice stuff. And I did my yearly thing. What one day um, I love I love my Civic here. But one day I do want to have a mini, and so every year I go and I sit in a mini, and I just it just makes me feel better, and it tides me over to the next year. So you know, hey, <laughs> everyone has a dream, and we do what we can. So it's cool. Um, but you know, it 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 got me thinking about uh, some things, and um, you know, there was there was no Formula One race this weekend because it wasn't one on the schedule. Um, but, and I'm sounding like I'm a major car head, and I'm not. I, you know, I know what a V6 and a V8 are, um, but you get much more beyond those types of things, and, you know, I know in theory, but I don't really know how any of the parts work inside. I just like, I just appreciate it and enjoy the spectacle and all that. But a lot of stuff has been happy, happening in Formula One that I think kind of hints on some larger things and also some things I'm dealing with at work um, and you know I think we're we're dealing with uh, as a society so I want to talk about that a little bit and that's the fact that you know the world is changing and the world the way the world works is changing and it always it has been this is nothing new you know the, the dot-com era um, kind of brought that in ushered us into this new age um, you know, we don't, we don't, no one calls up a travel agent more anymore to book travel. Well, I, some people do, but most of us don't. You just go online, you book things, you, you know, the bookstores died, print publications, you know, are dying or dead. There's all sorts of stuff that's going on in the way people want and consume content. And there's incredible businesses, Amazon and all these things that have made, you know, they're now huge businesses. Um, that were made by taking advantage of this change and the stuff that the internet allows us and the communication that this allows us. You know, when I was growing up, I, I didn't have anything. The only TV was, you know, on network TV or, or public access um, channels, which the quality was no good. Um, 
mostly. Wayne's World, right? Your public access show, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, great, great, f funny movie. Not really about public access TV, but more about Mike Myers being goofy. But anyway, um, so it's just the amount of things, the things we can do now that were never thought of, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. And it's a problem for long-standing institutions. And it's a problem for the long-standing institutions that you and I care about or that we care about and we want to see succeed. Like, am I really going to lose sleep if, you know, Procter & Gamble doesn't modernize themselves and take advantage of the digital capabilities that are out there now and eventually goes out of business? I mean, personally, I don't have that kind of brand loyalty to the products they make. And yes, it would suck. People lose their jobs and it's been around forever and I don't have a anything against them. I just chose them because it was the first old company that popped into my head. But, you know, are we really going to lose sleep as, you know, the Amazons of the world take over and other businesses that we're not able to adapt wither? Um, no, but in, in institutions, in businesses, in, in things that there's only one of them, it's going to be, it, it, we're going to lose something. And, you know, it, like the New York Times. The New York Times is a, everyone knows the New York Times. And for, it has all this history of these great stories they've been involved with and great work it did. And they struggled hard to make it into the digital world because everything they had done was made for the way the world was before. And I think they've been very successful at it. They've managed to, you know, modernize their business and change the way they do business to be able to compete and still be around. And so we're not going to lose the New York Times. I, people may argue that they're not, you know, what they once were, blah, blah, all that stuff. But the fact is, they're still around. They're still playing the game. But that's not true of everyone. And the one, like, Formula One kind of highlights what happens when you have this organization that was created in one era and it has a structure and it has rules that were created in one era and the ground has shifted out from under it and can they survive and it's a it i don't know i don't know if 10 years from now i'm we're not going to be watching something else and i'm going to be you know watching some other racing series if anything because formula one's floundering right now they're you know, their product is not as exciting as it could be due to, you know, technological regulations that they put in place. Um, they're not embracing um, the digital era. If you look at Formula One versus IndyCar, Formula One, you try to find something online, you can't really find it unless it's someone's illegal um, stream or a, you know, YouTube video that's very quickly taken down. Um, but they are acting like the old school music labels. They are taking things down and trying to control their product. You know, you can, you can, they have official Instagrams and stuff like that, but it's not what people want to see versus look at IndyCar and a week after the race, the entire race is online on YouTube and they're being successful that way. So why is one organization able to do those types of things and the other one isn't? And I think it's really about maybe the accident of how they structured themselves before these things were even a thing. Because Formula One is, it's a, you know, they have Formula One management and they have the FIA and they have all the teams involved and they have the drivers associations and they have people who own, you know, are people who spend money to get in it. They have the track owners, they have the promoters, and they have all these rules and business arrangements and agreements between the different organizations and some organization own the commercial rights and others, you know, are responsible for making the rules that they operate under and others are, you know, responsible for competing. And it's all these web complicated, messy um, rules and organizations on how they interact. And it's basically made them stuck so they can't make decisions. They can't. There are people within Formula One that know what they need to do to be successful, that know how to embrace digital culture, that know how to get younger viewers and keep things going. And 
have all sorts of ideas to try to do this that may or may not fail. But because of all these different organizations and the way they're structured, nothing can happen. And it's it's up to you know either political infighting or everyone looking out for their own interests and not for the greater interests of the sports. And frankly, some pretty old, pretty set in their ways people at the top who have made a ton of money and don't want to change, don't really care about the future because you know what? They're not going to be around for the future. So, you know, that structure that has happened in this organization has crippled them. And it's it's like watching, I, I don't even know what it's watching. It's people running around and noodling our panic, you know, trying to go, what do we do? What do we do? And while, uh, and it's it's falling apart. And I really hope that something happens to break up the current stalemate or to really, you know, make change happen before it's too late. Uh, otherwise, that's a brand that has been around for a long time and that I personally love that's going to go away. And that's, I don't think that's good for anyone. When it's unique brands that have a unique product that other people don't have um, that go away. That, that's it's sad and yes it's the realities of business and you know money and all this stuff but you know it's screaming <laughs> into the wind about you know fix yourselves before you go away and unfortunately I have no power over that other than to say things like this and maybe you know people will hear it and repeat it and more people will hear it and repeat it and and then you know it'll get to the right ears and really, uh, as far as affecting change, that's that's really all I know how to do on this topic. Um, on the flip side, it's great to see organizations that have been around, you know, as long or longer in various forms, um, really be able to change. And I tell you, I don't, I don't know enough about how modern IndyCar is structured. Um, they had huge changes and shakeups in the, you know, when I was growing up and they divided into two different organizations and then bah, 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 and then got back together. I really don't know enough about how its leadership is structured to say why are they different and why are they able to, you know, change and, and be modern and give people what they want. Um, but it, it's, and that would be a really interesting thing to, to read up on and, and figure out, like, what are the structural differences between F1 and IndyCar that allow them, one organization to be successful and change, and the other one not to be? Um, so yeah, I, if anyone has any insights on that, you know, let me know in the comments. It's, it's certainly interesting, and it's probably something I'm going to, you know, do some reading about and ask about. I would be... I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it has something to do with less less actual legal entities, less organizations involved in IndyCar, and maybe the fact that there's, you know, frankly, less money involved in it. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, and <laughs> it's it's just been it's 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 been a crazy time watching this stuff happen. Um, especially over the past two weeks. And just like everyone from the outside looking at it is like, you guys are morons and what are you thinking? But you know, we know they're not morons. These people are smart at what they do. So there has to be something else involved that is leading them to make these, you know, from the outside moronic decisions. And I just, it's, I've been thinking about a lot and it's also been touching me as, you know, I, I work in a place that is changing from, you know, one way of doing business to focusing more on the digital side. And it's, you, we see some of the same things on, you know, people that won't let go of, of how things used to work or, or products that we have, you know, we established before in, in one set of rules and now the rules are different and we're spending a lot of time struggling on well how do we take this thing and make it work in this new you know new thing new world and what does it look like and it can't look the same because it just it doesn't fit but what elements of it are actually important and what things need to go and what need to stay and it's really hard it's really tough to try and you know modernize things that have existed for a while or or you know take you know, <laughs> take a Jedi and put him in the star on the Enterprise. You know, it's the rules are different. 
So how's it gonna work? And it just, it's not easy. So everyone going through this, and everyone out there, and as you watch things and you, you look at things that happen and you're like, what were they thinking? Just know that there's probably something else going on as well that uh, makes it difficult to do. So anyway, that not really, I don't really have an answer or a, 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 a conclusion um, in this. It's just a point that I've been thinking about lately and um, been frustrated by and been amused by and been, you know, really just dealing with. Um, so. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any thoughts. I don't have any words of wisdom on this one. It's a little bit uh, beyond me at this point. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll admit it. I don't know everything. And I know there's people in the audience, family members of mine, maybe, who are going to get a chuckle out of me saying I don't know everything. Um, but, you know, I don't. And there, I can say it. So, <laughs> hope you have a good week. I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Um, new lineage coming out this Saturday. Uh, new series coming out. Um, I don't know when. Uh, probably starting this weekend. It might be a Minecraft 1.9 mod pack. Very cool stuff. Um, and until then, keep playing and I'll see you later. Bye.